What's up, Leron here, and today we're gonna paint these uh, buildings. What's up, Leron here. Thank you for joining me in another vid. Today we're outside and we're gonna paint uh, these buildings that I just showed you. Uh, what attracted me to them was the really uh, interesting, I think, shadows and, and shapes there aren't uh, any I'll, I guess large shapes here so it's gonna be a bit of a challenge to simplify what we see um, I actually uh, hope to be able to give a good impression of it I think I'll do a bit of a different approach this time and I'll focus more on the initial wash uh, and getting as many details as possible in that I may end up overdoing it uh, you know just wasting a lot of energy and getting the result I don't want because it's hard keeping the balance when you focus for a long long time on just one wash uh, this is what I find at least but yeah I guess it's just a matter of practice as always we're gonna get started and I hope you will enjoy this one okay so I'm starting out with the drawing I'm running things at a rather high speed so this is about four times uh, because I just really take my time and took my time in this process in particular uh, there are two main things to notice here uh, one would be the perspective and the other is the composition so the perspective part is where I have to be anchored in reality and what I see in front of me so I have to make sure that all my lines follow uh, the the vanishing points and everything looks correct now the other side of things again is the composition and this is where I can move things around uh, I can decide that the center of attention is gonna be to the right or to the left um, and so on now I didn't give too much thought to the composition in this particular process that's my bad um, so I'm mainly going with what you see in the reference there um, so I, I'm just sketching the scene as I see it uh, in front of me without giving too much thought to maybe I should zoom out a bit maybe I should incorporate different elements maybe I should incorporate one of these um, uh, different poles that you see the vertical shapes in the scene uh, to uh, together with the shapes and more in the background so all I my plan was here was to put in the buildings at the front with the interesting light conditions uh, maybe one or two cars to the right and then the building at the background um, and I wasn't even planning it out that well to create depth or anything uh, so when you plan um, <laughs> in a sloppy manner uh, you get a sloppy result now I also sketched in a few people that I'm gonna put in later on uh, one important note about this process I really my stomach was I don't know what I ate the day before and I woke up really early and and went out to uh, uh, to sketch outside not really early but around uh, noon uh, and my stomach started hurting and I just felt like I have to go like I have to go lay down or go to the bathroom or something just not stay there um, and it hit me kind of <laughs> when I started painting this um, so you will see me working really differently from from my usual style I'm working much faster and I'm trying to think how I can get the same result with fewer brush strokes with faster uh, just a faster process okay so just a side note about this entire process and the funny thing is of course when I want the one time I really want to go home as fast as possible I, I gave up on the painting at some point okay I was like mm, never mind. I'm, I'm just gonna do my best and get the hell out of there um, so the one time I really wanted to go out quickly, to go back quickly, tons of people stopped to talk and ask questions about the process and say, oh, this is beautiful. And, and I'm, I really appreciate it, but I was like nervous. Um, so in any case, uh, here you see all of the lines I draw have to match the perspective. So the windows, the things, everything I, I put in there, uh, the shapes of the, the balconies, uh, the different um, ledges and everything. Okay, so now I'm moving on to painting this. Um, the perspective thing, I will make another video in the future about, again, more detailed explanation on how to work in perspective. Uh, I already have a few uh, of these, so you can check them out, but they're a bit older, so maybe it's time for uh, a new one in the near future. Uh, so I will touch more upon that. Uh, my general strategy here is to cover up the sky, uh, to leave the buildings quite light, uh, and then put in the uh, just the shadows. Uh, okay, that my base, uh, let's say my lightest value here is gonna be the paper white and there's gonna be a lot of it. This is not the usual way I do things. I do tend to cover up everything, uh, but in this one I decided to do things a little differently, again, as I mentioned. Uh, and just regardless of the fact that I had to go to the bathroom, 
I just wanted to do some things uh, differently there and, and test out uh, different uh, approaches. So we see the building at the back. It's really almost just, sorry, I had a hiccup. It's really just uh, a weird um, li uh, white and gray combination. I don't go into too many details there. Uh, I don't care about the edges of the sky to the left because as I mentioned, the building is going to be white and then I'm going to just put in the shadows there. Now what's funny is, do you see how light these shadows I'm putting in now are? This is how light the shadows in the in the closer buildings should be. But I only use these for the building at the back. Again, I, we talked a, a bit about this recently, about uh, lately, about um, putting in too dark a value and not paying enough attention to the mid values. Uh, so here you see I'm going a little too dark to start with, I think. But in any case, uh, my plan was this. How can I indicate uh, as many details as possible in one wash of shadows um, and still leave all the highlights, the white, as highlights? This was my strategy. And I wanted to do this while alternating with the colors. So my colors are going to be all over the place in this one. I did use just three colors for this. Um, but uh, I'm using very uh, varied mixes and, and different ratios of, of, of the different colors. So I'm basically using, and I, I, I'm trying to always talk about uh, a bit of wet and wet in here, by the way. Uh, I'm always trying to talk about the art materials I use. So I'm, I kind of remember in the middle of the process and then mention. So if I don't, I, I, I usually, if you listen or watch the video and you don't hear it, usually it'll, it's going to come at some point. Uh, so the colors I'm using here are... Sh uh, a mix of Schmincke, uh, St. Petersburg, and um, I think that's it. Uh, so I'm using Thalo Blue. This is the blue you see. Uh, I'm using Quinacridone Rose as a red. Uh, and I'm using uh, this weird yellow that I don't even remember. I think it's an Indian yellow, I think. Um, so in any case, these are the mixes you get from these different colors. I may use a bit of uh, cadmium red later on, like a warmer red, but for now this is what you see. Uh, and I'm starting to put in the shadows. Now, this is a part I really like and really challenges me at the same time. First wash, as I mentioned, everything kind of blends in together. It's all good and fun. Uh, the next wash, this is where things get a little complicated because you have to start establishing the, the depth. And you have to choose what you want to darken further. And then you have to read the shapes as you see them. So this is what you see me do now. I'm observing the building and I'm trying to read the shapes that I'm seeing. Uh, and and I'm, I'm trying to get in the, the mid values and the darks at the same time. Uh, which was a bit of a challenge and I, I, I didn't really do the best job I could at it. But you can see I dar darkened things up uh, where the balcony and the window are and the corner uh, quote-unquote of the building because it's a rounded corner um, and then I'm going back to some lighter values for the the shadow under that um, different uh, this weird beveled part I never know how to call the different elements of the building and I'm not even sure that <laughs> there are proper words uh, for them but in any case uh, we're about a third through the process and the reason we got to a third so fast is uh, that again I was in a hurry uh, so you'll see me pick, picking up the pace uh, later on. Uh, so my plan in terms of composition and color, uh, sometimes I pay attention to the colors as well, meaning uh, I try to play with warm and cool. Okay, the temperature. I don't always remember, but this time I did. And my plan was to start warm from the top. So you see a lot of reds and oranges here. And then the more I go down, change it up into a bit of a blue. Now this thing I'm now uh, uh, painting in uh, is the gaps in the windows, you know, rooftop ledge thing. So you're supposed to, this is actually the sky that you see through it. Uh, and hopefully you get that impression. I don't know if the shape was as accurate as it could have been. Um, it's really hard for me to tell. This process, by the way, was quite some time ago. So I'm trying to figure out um, how well it reads. It's always an interesting experience going back to your older paintings and I do plan to make uh, a video uh, of me I have like 16 sketchbooks here uh, in the studio uh, because finally I have a studio so I actually store everything here and they're so interesting so I thought about going back to some and revisit them 
Plus, uh, I, I was um, asked for, uh, a long time ago to do uh, a video where I try to improve an existing old painting that I'm not pleased with. So I'm going to try and do that as well. Uh, so it's always interesting digging up old work and seeing how your style has shifted and how your approach changed and how you improved in some aspects and maybe even how you... Uh, uh, lost some abilities and other things. Usually I just see improvement because it's long periods of time and I do paint um, uh, quite consistently, I would say. Uh, so now you see some wet and wet there in the main balcony. This is the darkest part and I figured it could be a nice point of contrast there. Um, so I've, I tried creating that. Uh, here I was just thinking about uh, I didn't do any stories today for Instagram so I'll probably do one soon uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram by the way uh, I post there like the videos are now three three videos a week uh, this should be Thursday's video what I'm recording now because I make them in advance so I don't always remember but uh, the Instagram is constantly uh, being updated with stories so if you want to see works in progress stuff like that uh, be sure to check it out uh, now you see I'm starting to darken things up a little and also gray and brown and blue them. In a moment you'll see how I go a little more blue here. Um, just because <coughs> the the thing uh, with the with the top part of the building is it's closer to the sunlight. So I try and keep it a little warm. This is completely a stylistic choice. You don't have to do this. I've seen beautiful transitions from cool to warm, from warm to cool. It all works um, as long as it's anchored in a larger consistent good composition which is again my main challenge right now um, so in any case yeah it's really interesting to see the evolution I think over the past six months the main my main evolution was the composition so what changed was I would just paint things differently uh, meaning a scene like this I wouldn't even paint unless I chose to focus on one small part of it uh, that that I would do um, because I'm looking for a composition that for a scene that will work compositionally as well. Now you could make this work, of course, but I, if I don't feel like I'm good enough to make it work, I'll skip it and choose a bit of a different one. Uh, something that allows for more depth, so like a winding road, um, more perspective in it. This one has, of course, perspective. There's always perspective, but it's very nuanced. And I find that when it's nuanced, it's harder to do. Uh, so yeah, now I'm getting in that building on the left. It's orange, as you can tell. Uh, very light orange, so I'm I'm trying to place that in and create a differentiation between that and the building in the center. Now in this part, I'm already my stomach is like uh, I'm not gonna make you happy today. <laughs> That's what it says to me. So I'm really in a hurry to get things done. Um, now I cover the street level and then paint around the cars. Uh, I left them for now, not painted. Now here there was a shadow that. Uh, I either missed or I initially didn't plan on putting at all. I planned on changing it, so I put that in. Um, the The thing is, every painting goes through that ugly stage where you're uncertain of what you do. Uh, and usually the person most aware of that ugly stage is you, the artist. Others sometimes can't see this, can't feel this. It's mostly us. Uh, I'm putting in the tree there. I'm trying to make it not too bright because it's not the center of attention, not too vibrant. Um, it's a bit grayed out. So in any case, usually we as the artists notice the ugly stage. So you might watch this and completely enjoy the process and think, oh, it looks really good. But for me, I especially when working on this, I was like, mm, it's not connecting. Now, usually this happens when you're just not finished with the work. You just have some darker values that you, uh, lighter values that need darkening to create some depth, or you went and darkened something that's supposed to be light too much. That can also happen sometimes. It, it sucks because you can't really fix it. Uh, but in any case, yeah. So now I'm putting in the, the shapes of the cars. Uh, my plan was very simple. Light comes from the right, so the right side of the car is going to be a little well lit and the top parts as well. I will admit I was a bit gimmicky in my approach, so it's like I painted... The <laughs> there wasn't... A it's not a also... <laughs> well, I'm just trying to find my words here. It's it wasn't even my fault because there were two interesting cars there and then they went and I didn't... I wasn't able to see them at this particular point. So I was relying on memory... But my problem is it's not only memory of the scene, it's also memory of how I've seen other people paint cars. 
So it's a bit gimmicky and a bit. This is how I'll. I'll I did it a little bit haphazardly, if that that's the way to say it. I'm not sure. Um, because I use the word sloppy too much. By the way, there is a window outside my uh, home studio, and it actually always has <laughs> two pigeons outside. And, and it's funny because I, we put uh, a few songs here inside, and, and we saw the pigeons, and they were all romantic. They're just two pigeons standing next to one another. So that's a funny thing to look at. Um, they're always there. That's their spot. So in any case, now I'm starting to darken the building on the left. Now I did zoom in on the reference uh, photo so you can better see the details of the building on the right. <laughs> Unfortunately, I cut out the orange building. But in just a few moments, uh, I'll get to the buildings on the right and you'll, you'll be able to better tell what I'm doing. Um, I wanted you to see the details. And this is something I've been trying to do for the past maybe three, four videos. Uh, when I uh, get to an interesting spot that I think at least is an interesting spot, I zoom in on the reference so you can better see the details. And I know how important it is for you to see the details of the picture and, and uh, the scene and how I interpret it. This is one thing that I'm really happy about, seeing the actual original piece. Uh, I find that to be incredibly important. If I don't, then if... if if you don't see it, uh, you don't know what I'm basing my interpretation on. Uh, a few words about the other materials I'm using. So my brush right now is a silver black velvet. Uh, this is mostly the brush I used for this process. I also have a Raphael brush that is more of a mop brush, a larger one that I use. And I also have a Leonard brush that's a little uh, larger for the first wash. Um, this isn't such a big piece, so I could use just the smaller brushes. Um, but you do have to work faster with a smaller brush, so that's one thing to be aware of. Um, what else is interesting here? The paper, <coughs> sorry about that, is Saunders Waterford. Trying to get a bit of dry brush effect there. Uh, the paper is Saunders Waterford. Uh, I believe that's three uh, 600 uh, grams because I, there was a time period where I used the 600 grams heavily. Um, and then I switched to uh, the 300 grams uh, because it was just uh, excess. I didn't really need it. It's nicer for larger pieces when you don't want them to buckle as much, but it's really not a must, especially if you're working uh, half uh, quarter sheet and under. Uh, and this is quarter sheet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the the wooden piece that that it the paper is taped to is a wooden piece I just got uh, at the local art store. Uh, they're fairly cheap. Usually, I wouldn't recommend buying simple things like this at an art store or art arts and craft store. But this was rather cheap, so I got it. The easel is US Art Supplies easel. It's really good for watercolor. It changes the angle, which is a must for me. Uh, I have to control the flow of water that way. Uh, I'm using my water cup that's a click and go cup. Um, and you see the strings on the bottom left area. This is actually um, ice. So uh, I used the wire and, and um, just passed it through the cup a few times. And, and that way I can hang it on my easel, which is a really neat thing that helps me a lot. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, now moving on with the process, uh, hopefully you can, I don't even, like, I look at some of the things and I'm like, it's totally different from the reference. If you squint your eyes, for example, you will see uh, one main thing, I think, is that my darks are much darker than what you see in the reference. I should have kept this a little lighter, this entire thing, and it's again the thing I uh, that I am challenged most by uh, after composition. So like composition would be the main thing, then values. Um, as long as you get these two things, like the composition is the drawing basically. So as long as you have an accurate drawing and a good composition and good values, you're magic. You're, you're gonna create beautiful artworks. Um, but I do understand, a part of me understand it's just a matter of time. Uh, now, aside from the buildings that I'm working on right now, I will have to do something with the street, street level uh, next to the cars. The trees are gonna have to be darkened a bit. Um, trying to figure out what <laughs> how we can get the most out of this process uh, without uh, wasting too much time, basically. I'm like, time to go. Let's let's wrap this thing up. Uh, what you see now is four times the original speed, by the way. Again, uh, I put in the yellow markings on the sidewalk, on the edge of the sidewalk. Uh, and now it's time for the shadows in the trees. Now, one thing I'm missing here is the mid values for the trees. Probably should have covered all of the parts of the trees almost with this value and then add the shadows. Maybe this is what I'm going to do now. Uh, I don't really remember everything. Uh, one of the things I actually like uh, a lot is to watch the videos of myself painting 
while noticing the environment and how everything keeps changing and you know people are passing by and uh, cars are passing by and sometimes uh, I get asked questions the the one thing uh, in a previous video I posted uh, there was a part where this guy approaches me it was so funny uh, I'm gonna show it to you on Instagram soon um, so it may be in one of my posts this guy stopped stood in front of me and said can you paint me it, it was just like that and, and he saw that i was in the middle of something and he was like if you were a man you would tell me you would that's literally what he said he said if you were a man you would stop the painting you're doing right now and and paint me and he was just it was uh, it was a joke obviously that's people in israel sometimes feel very comfortable <laughs> to make such jokes uh and then i told him no i'm not gonna let you stand in the sun like this you know it's super hot right now and you'll get a heat stroke and he was he just left and he was like you're one of our gangs you're you're one of our gang members it was so funny i, I the whole situation was funny i'm gonna show it to you um maybe on instagram or something i cut it out of the video because it was just supposed to be the painting process so now back to the <laughs> process at hand uh, i'm actually going to take a quick break in a moment uh, and and give a live quote-unquote update from the scene what i recorded back on the scene but for now what i'm doing is trying to put in some details into that building in the background without having it uh, pop too much because i don't want it to to take all the attention from the buildings at the front and I want to preserve the sense that it's actually behind them, okay? And then I figured the bottom part is much darker, so I'd better darken it to make that differentiation, uh, as you see now, as uh, compared to the building on the right. It's much darker. Uh, so I used a lot of dry brush, but very, very light. And this is something that's fairly challenging. Now someone asked me a question, so I'm pointing at the paper. Um, this is something that's very challenging to keep things light at the background, and especially dry brush, having it uh, light, I actually should make a video on dry brushing soon. I, it's a good thing I remembered. I'm going to write it down for myself here. And now we're going to take a quick break and I'm going to talk from the scene and then we'll be back with more explanations. Okay, so friends, let me show you what I've got so far. Uh, this has been a really challenging uh, process. I tried to take a bit of a different uh, approach with this one and work really carefully on the first layer, trying to get as many things as accurately as possible. Well, let me show you. So here's a better angle for you than this one in which I was recording the video. Uh, so you can see here the, the this stage, it's almost done. Just adding a few final details, some people, some, uh, I don't know, some mid values, I guess, are missing here. So I'll have to see exactly what I make out of this. Here's my scene, a very, very beautiful one that really captivated me with all the, you know, the sharp contrasts under the different ledges and stuff like that. Uh, I find these to be very challenging to capture, so we'll see how it goes and hopefully uh, it'll work together as something nice. I think I also need to um, to darken these highlights. They're uh, excessive on the cars. I don't really need them. Uh, so let's go on. Okay, so uh, as you can see, I have a plan for the continuation of this painting. Uh, whenever I'm patient, I notice that I have uh, usually good plans and I know what I want to improve. Um, so I have, sometimes I'll even write it down as a list. Okay, kill some of the highlights, uh, change the shadow here, darken that shadow, add a shape that I forgot maybe. Uh, every time it's going to be something else. Um, so uh, this is just an, a note for you, you know, if, if you're impatient like me. Um, and this is really the worst example because I was really impatient. Look at the people. This is supposed to be people. I, I was really not putting <laughs> too much work at this point uh, that's my bad but uh, in any case there is a lot of value to planning things out carefully and, and now again this is a process actually from a few months ago but now i feel I, like i'm much more patient and i am much more uh, better much much better at not at speaking clearly <laughs> but at uh, planning things out and being more deliberate about what i do um and I used to be so nervous about, like, I have to finish the painting. That was my goal. Finish the painting. And there's no reason to rush. I used to really rush. And now I'm like, I'm going to take a break now. I feel like I'm uh, the painting process turns into something that's a little too forced for me. I feel like I'm forcing myself. I'm going to stop. And taking these, um, uh, let's say, deliberate breaks can really help uh, with getting you back on track, uh, especially when you're when you feel like the process is a little forced and you're trying it and you can't see it, you know, taking a break from the painting, uh, looking, 
like doing something else, coming back to the reference after like 20 minutes, even not a l you don't need a lot of time, um, looking at the reference and trying to figure out what feels a bit off, and then you will find it. You'll find it out uh, if you do that, and then you'll be able to correct it uh, very easily, and you'll be like, oh, it's a good thing I took a break. Because what I figured was it doesn't really matter if it takes me a day or a week to finish a painting. What matters is that I am completely immersed in the process and the result. Eventually, you want to get a nice result. So uh, it's not the, the most important thing, especially if you're still learning, but uh, being immersed in the process is really important. And when you're getting a little sloppy and uh, you're not really present with it, you're not learning too. That's the problem. Uh, so that's something I wanted to pay attention to. Now, I tried creating some depth with that um, electricity uh, pole. Um, I don't know how well that works. Again, it was a bit of a gimmick, but I was like, mm, how do I f finish this uh, and move on? So I tried uh, to figure out the quick way to do it. Now, I am am pretty pl pretty pleased with the cards on the right. They're definitely not perfect, uh, but I, I killing the highlights was the right decision, I think. Um, so yeah, so now all that's left to do is to sign this. I think I'm done. I'm trying to mix the right uh, amount to, to <laughs> have a proper signature, but in any case, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's wrap it up. So friends, I'm done here. Uh, it's a bit noisy. I hope you can hear me. So once again, uh, our references, you can barely see them because of the <laughs> Uh, such strong contrast with me and the sunlight. Uh, but basically, I want to show you the final result. Uh, I'm going to flip it so you can better see in higher quality. So here we go, the final result. I definitely want to revisit uh, this scene because I feel like I didn't really get the exact result I wanted. I'm still pleased with it, but I think there's quite a lot uh, to improve here in terms of larger shapes, I guess, and simplifying even more. That's the thing that uh, is always a big challenge. How to simplify the scene in a way that'll make sense, that'll read well, that'll be realistic, uh, and that will just look good, you know? So uh, here it is again. There's a lot to do, um, and I didn't necessarily go for the easiest subject. You know, there isn't any glaringly obvious larger shapes here. I really had to come up with them my, uh, on my own, which is a big, a big challenge. Sorry, I had a hiccup. A big challenge always. Uh, but in any case, this is it. I really hope uh, you enjoy this one and we can wrap up this vid. Okay, so this is it. We can wrap up this video. I really hope you enjoyed this process. Uh, a bit of a challenging one once again, but it's like you have no choice but to continue and do it again and again and again. Um, a good advice I got was actually to revisit the same scene a couple of times. Uh, and and I, heard, I, I was told that it really helps to even force yourself, yourself to paint the same th scene maybe th three times, I guess. I can't do it more than once. Uh, up until this point, I didn't really, but then the second time you come with a bit more um, experience in that particular light and that particular setting, and you can be, I guess, more free to try new things. Uh, so in any case, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, don't forget to check out my beginner's drawing course in the description box below. Also my podcast, if you just enjoy listening to, to the different topics we discuss and things like this. Um, a lot of interesting stuff there on my Instagram if you want to see this in progress, stuff like that. Uh, and I will see you again in the next vid real soon.